So let's try another one. So here in the Academy at portswigger.net web security, I take the browser that's built into Burp and I log in there, which I've already done here. So, and I went to look at the SQL injection labs. Let's try some of these. So my Burp is here. And if I go to proxy history, I see all these requests, which is good. I'll clear all the old stuff. And now, um, so here is uh, determining the number of columns returned by the query. This is usually an early step in any SQL injection attack. Once you find a vulnerability, the next question, you have to figure out uh, how much data you can see from the request that you have discovered. So let's see. I've hopefully opened the lab. It is thinking about it. It's one thing about containers and also about my private cloud machines you're using. They've crammed a lot of them on a machine and obviously they run a little slow. I'll look at what I'm supposed to do here. So use Burp Sweep to intercept and modify the request that sets the product category filter. Okay, it's giving me an error. They apologize for the inconvenience. Let's see if I can get in if I try it again. Ah, it looks like it worked this time. Okay. All right. All right, so here we are. Giant pillow thing, Cheshire chat grin. Okay, and what was the question? Modify the request that sets the product category filter. So, oh, here's the filter. Okay, so I can click a filter like food and drink, and then it will filter only to that. So first, let's just try that. I'm First, I'm going to clear the old traffic in Burp again. I like to do this to make my life simpler. Right-click, clear history. Okay, now back to the Burp built-in browser, lifestyle. So it just filtered the products to lifestyle. So let's look. This appears to be the category lifestyle filter that they're talking about. And their instructions say, intercept and modify that request and change the category parameter to this. Now I'm going to try breaking their rules and doing it the easier way. I could modify it, but I'm going to see if I can just repeat this. Now when they told me to intercept it, maybe that's because repeating is not going to work. Let's see if repeating works. It does work, but I think I can just do it right here. So I've got a um, category equals lifestyle, and they say change it to this with an apostrophe. And notice, by the way, just like ha just happened to a student, this period at the end is not part of the text you're supposed to put in there. If I wrote these instructions, I would put this in a different font and on a different line because it's not incredibly obvious that you should include the apostrophe but not the period, but that looks more correct. Union select null. So let me change that to union select null here instead of lifestyle. And let's see what that does. Now, let's see the result of this. Was I'm going to render this. We can see it like you'd see it in a browser. And there, I had like these four things, mood enhancer and so on. Now, if I send this one, internal server error, okay, and I think that is expected. Um, that creates an error. And the internal server error, by the way, is the one in MySQL Injection Lab where it would have said an unequal number of columns. And what it means is whatever it would normally send would be collecting more. So this say try adding null comma null and add null until you find the right number. So let's try null comma null and see if that works. And that's also an error. So again, that works. And now you get, so there are three columns there. And by the way, a lot of reference works tell you to use nulls. But real hacking tools I've seen just go one, two, three. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. All right. Anyway, so it, the answer is three, and that's enough to solve that one. So let's take, so that one should now say solved, and it does. So let's take a look at another one. Here's finding a column containing text, which is quite similar. So let me open this one. The 
and probably because all you people are using the Academy, their servers seem kind of busy. Okay, good. It's letting me in. Okay, same kind of thing. I can filter the data by these columns. So they say category filter, determine the number of columns, three columns, and replace each null with the random value provided by the lab. Okay, so I'm finding the value that has text in it. That's the idea. So let's go here to the proxy, the history, and clear the old stuff. And now go here and filter. Okay, now I've got a request that performs the filtering, which is this one. So I send it to the repeater. And now I put in this plus union select null null null. That's the right way to refer to explicit data for students to copy, by the way, not in a sentence with a period in it anyway. So now I go here and put that instead of corporate press gifts. Whoops. Okay, there I put in all that junk. And now it will presumably work. And it did work, which is good. Okay. So now it didn't. And now I want to feed in um, the random value provided by the lab. And up here they said... To solve the lab, returns an additional row containing the value provided. So where is the value provided? Um, oh, this string right here, L20Y. That's why this is how they make sure students aren't cheating. You have to put in this particular value and nothing else. And that changes all the time. So I need to inject that value instead of one of these nulls. Okay. And I've got like an extra space or something there. That's the value. I want to put it in my clipboard. Okay, so I put it in the first column. And that gives me an error. So I think that's probably failure. So I'll... Uh, undo that and put it in the second column. Try that. And now it works. So I think and right there it tells me you won. Okay, so that's just finding which column will give you a text result. And I think the reason you use null is it'll work in number or text, but anyway. And then there's another one here, retrieving data from other tables. So this is cute. Let's open the lab here. Close all these others. And look at the solution. Yeah, determine the number of columns and which columns contain text data. Okay, that's the first bit. And then you select user pass the from users. So this simulates the entire steps to some extent in a SQL injection attack. So I'm going to again use the product category filter. So I go and clear my old stuff, proxy, right click, clear history. And now I turn on a filter like patch. And there's the filter. So I send that to the repeater. Then I go in the repeater. And this pets. Okay, so now I need to find the um, number of columns and which columns contain text data. So they suggested this. Let's start with exactly that. That might be right. Okay, that's two columns of text and nothing else. Let's see what happens. And it works. Okay, so that's handy. Now I know I have two columns of text. And um, I don't need a third column or anything. And so now I just need to... This will username and password. This will select the two columns. That's right. So this is easy enough right there. Those two columns will then be username and password. And I have from the table named users. So again, that is the answer that goes there. And when I run that, yeah. 
I just check. Uh, it should give me the answer down here. Oh, yeah, there's usernames and passwords. Yeah, I heard a question. So um, they gave you username and passwords as the column titles there. Yeah. Uh, is there a way to find that without the uh, given information? Yes, there is. And let me, I'm glad you asked that. Let me bring that up. Uh, that was from what we did earlier. And let me point it out. If you go to um, this one here, that's the point of this stuff. The username and password are stored in these automatically generated tables, like information schema. So you can you can find the column names, for example, with this one. This if you you just have to determine what type of database is being used, and there's only like three or four common ones. So if you're doing MySQL, it's you can do this select column name from information schema columns, and then you'll find all the column names down here: ID, name, and SSN. And there's a series of uh, you can do it uh, step by step. So you can totally find all that. Once you find SQL injection, you can determine all the names, like the name of the table, name of the database, and name of the fields. It's a very good question. All right, I'm going to stop this recording.